Hello, this is Brian at BTR, and I'm here today to talk about Spintron. So what you've got is you've got a huge electric motor that is uh, driving the uh, engine. And um, there's basically three versions of Spintron. There's a 25 horsepower, 50 horsepower, 75 horsepower. This is the 75 horsepower version. Uh, of course, it's driven off this big um, variable frequency drive. And so the electric motor um, drives the shaft. Now the, the crankshaft in the engine is actually replaced with a straight shaft. So there's no traditional crankshaft, there's no rods, there's no pistons. But then the shaft uh, drives the timing chain, that drives the cam, that dri drives the valve train. So the, the valve train is uh, functions normal, but you know the straight shaft is what enables you to um, get rid of the rods and pistons and we put a plug at the bottom of each hole and uh, that allows us to cut a window and a block for the laser. Now a lot of people think that the Spintron, um, you know, is a camera looking at the spring, uh, and you can do that. But the primary function of the Spintron is to actually trace the valve motion, and it does that with this laser uh, on the valve head shining up on the valve head. When you look at the trace that you get off the Spintron, um, you basically have four things that we look at. You have an initial opening deflection. You have a, a loft event. Uh, you have closing deflection and bounce. So obviously, the more opening deflection you have, uh, the system tends to unload. And when it unloads, it increases the loft. Uh, the more loft you have, you tend to have more closing deflection. And, and typically, more closing deflection also yields more bounce. And of those four, closing bounce is by far the most destructive. This is the Spintron console. This is, um, you know, obviously where you operate the Spintron from. You can see we have the software pulled up and uh, I want to step you through um, you know what the traces look like as you progress through the RPM you know what we're what we're looking at is the baseline is what the valve train is doing at a thousand RPM and then the data is in the data RPM is is in red here it says you transition from 2000 RPM 3000 4000 you see the uh, the trace start changing and and you see the opening deflection we talked about you see the loft uh, closing deflection and bounce and this particular camshaft is one of the worst examples we've ever seen um, you see how completely out of shape this thing is it has all this opening deflection which then unloads and lofts over the nose and then all that loft causes this closing deflection and amazingly, there's not much bounce there. But as soon as you move just a few hundred more RPM, you can see here at 7400, um, this thing has 45 thousandths closing bounce. And um, when you look at peak lift, um, you know, your, your peak lift is, you've got over a hundred thousandths more lift than what you're supposed to have which is you would think would maybe equate to more power but it doesn't because when the valve intake valve is bouncing it can't trap air and when it can't trap air it, the engine can't make power this is a camshaft we did for eric gash he was the previous gen 5 eighth mile record holder um and you can see right now we're about 7200 rpm you can see the trace looks pretty good um, as we transition 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 100, 8,000 RPM. You can see at 8,000 RPM, um, it starts to get a little out of shape over the nose, but the closing bounce is still very much very much in check. Um, 6,000 bounce there. 6,000 happens to be our threshold for maximum closing bounce that we like to see. And we see the lots of our competitor stuff that's, 20 thousandths and more closing bounce. We design chem lobes in house, which is very important. You know, people that are trying to produce camshafts and pay somebody else to develop lobes for them, I don't know how you can really even do that effectively. Um, so as we develop the lobe designs, grind them on a camshaft, test them, not only can we test different lobe designs, but we're also testing different lifters, different push rods, different valve springs, different valves, different valve weight. Um, on the Gen 5, um, for example, we tested the LT4 titanium intake valve. It's around 77 grams versus the hollow stem LT1 
uh, valve that's around 90 grams and surprisingly the hollow stem um, stainless LT1 valve was almost as good as the titanium which typically the titanium valve is, is a lot better so we were surprised that the LT1 valve was that good. What you see uh, in the testing is really the lobe design is the foundation like the foundation of a house. If you mess up the lobe design it really doesn't matter what you do with valve weight or spring or anything else you you cannot fix the valve train to do what you need it to do. Let's say you need a 8,000 RPM or 9,000 RPM hydraulic roller uh, capable engine. Um, if you mess up the, the lobe design, if you get too aggressive of a lobe, you're not going to fix it with any amount of spring, uh, which is what a lot of people try to do. And too much spring pressure is just as bad as too little spring pressure, because as you increase that seat pressure, you increase the opening deflection which you know once again if you increase the opening deflection you can increase the loft increase the closing deflection and increase the the closing bounce so the other thing that uh, we developed on a spintron that we're very proud of is our shaft rocker kit so this is a stock aluminum LS1 uh, LS2 LS3 type stand uh, and this is the shaft rocker kit we developed and you can see that the uh, you know each pair of rockers is for is instead of being bolted with two bolts individually they're on this one shaft that's bolted down with five bolts total and when we developed this we even tested uh, an aluminum stand against the steel stand and saw a difference um, in that the steel stand was better uh, at one point we were just testing different trunnions to see um, if there was a difference in trunnion and we even tested uh, different bolts. We tested a GM bolt, a BTR bolt, an ARP stud, and we actually saw a difference uh, in the trace and in closing bounce just between the different fasteners.